Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> yes, welcome to another truly unique Tuesday with me, Unique. Um, we're going to be continuing in our study of Romans, um, but first of all, we're going to have some worship. So see you back here afterwards. I 
at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden.
be the lamb. Hello again, everyone. Um, we're just going to open up in prayer before we get into the Bible study. So, Heavenly Father, um, we just come before you again today, Lord, and we just want to lift your name on high. Lord, we want to praise you and thank you, Lord, for all the good gifts that you've given to us. We thank you most of all for the precious gift that you've given in your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, who, who died for us and gave himself for us. So we thank you, Lord, that you have given us new life. And I just pray for those, Lord, who don't know you, that, Lord, um, they will see your goodness, Lord, and they will recognize their need for a savior. Lord, thank you that you've washed us and cleansed us, Lord, that you've made us whole. So, Lord, I just pray that, um, you know, that that many more will come to know the, the wonders of your love and your mercy. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you save the sinner. Lord, I thank you for your grace. And uh, I just pray that you bless this time together, anoint it, and use it in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, so um, we're going to um, read from verse 20. We're almost at the end of um, Romans 12, this chapter. So I'm not expecting this to take very long just to... You know, just to um, read these couple of verses here, but um, saying that um, I was stuck on verse 19 last last week for the whole study. So, <laughs> um, so we'll see how we go. Um, but I think I might hopefully make an attempt at Romans 13 if we can get these um, finish the end of chapter 12. So, right. So. Verse 20, um, we'll just have Mr. Mr. Glynn read that for us. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Right, so... Um, yeah, so this is just continuing on from, um, you know, from the previous verses where Paul is, um, you know, Paul has been, um, you know, as he does, just advising the church um, how how they should live how they should be you know um so in chapter 12 it started out with sort of saying you know to offer your bodies as living sacrifices and um so last week we saw that he was saying um not to avenge yourselves but um you know <clears throat> but give place for wrath um because it's written that vengeance is mine says the lord so um, you know, so we we touched on forgiveness and things like that last week, and um, um, and you know, I was actually thinking that you know, Anne has actually been doing, Anne and Richard have been doing like some studies on um, repentance, and you know, the two really do go together, you know, forgiveness and repentance, because um, you know, forgiveness is when we ask, we go to God and say, ask Him to forgive us you know not just us going to other people to um or you know not just forgiving other people for the wrong that, wrongs that they've done you know um so you know it's it's really important to be aware of um you know the things in your own life and and in your own heart that need dealing with and so we do need to come daily <clears throat> as Anne um, and Richard have been saying, you know, just to allow the Lord to cleanse us. Um, 
So um, I would definitely recommend, um, I, I will leave a link at the end of the video um, so that you can actually go and watch the um, the teaching that Anne and Richard did on Sunday night when um, when they had the communion service, which was live. It's, it's always live on a Sunday, Sunday evening at 7 p.m. EST. So, um, yeah, it's right. So, so in verse 20, um, you know, it's saying <clears throat> that if, you're, if your enemy is hungry to feed him and if he thirsts to give him drink, so um, you know, this is not something you would normally do <laughs> to to your enemy. Um, you know, you wouldn't treat your enemy with kindness. But you know, here Paul is saying this is the kind of actions, you know, that um, that we're supposed to carry out. You know, and you know, I'm, I was thinking that it can't just be like just going through the motions of it. I think it has to come from the heart. You know, and only God can give us that kind of love. It's it's a kind of love that only God, you know, that you only find in God, really, usually. I think it's very rare to sort of find that kind of love in the world, you know. Um, so, um, and there's an interesting... Um, result here it says in doing so um you know so feeding your enemy or giving him water you know um it says in doing so you shall leap, heap coals of fire on his head and i had heard before and i'm not sure where it comes from i suppose it's like a custom or a um you know that was there at the time, you know, where it's actually seen as a blessing to, to put coals on someone's head is seen as a blessing. Um, but before we look into that, I'm going to just have a look at these cross references. So um, we have Proverbs 25, verse 21. It says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. So I I didn't really realize, I mean, I always tend to think that these are kind of more like New Testament teachings after Jesus said, love your enemies, you know, but th this is actually in, um, in the Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs. So that's, um, that's interesting to me. Um, then we've got Matthew 5 verse 44, and it says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which persecute you. So, um, and then we have Luke 6, verse 27, and it says, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. So, right, so that is... Yeah, that's quite, um, it sounds easy, but it's, um, <laughs> I think it can be a challenge. Um, you know, and I was sort of thinking, you know, um, who are your enemies? You know, we, we, we've heard it said, um, you know, when Jesus asked the question, sorry, Jesus was, no, that's right. Jesus asked the question um, after giving a parable I'll have to sort of um, see if I can find this. Um, I can't remember if it was Jesus or somebody else. Um, he gave the parable, parable of the Good Samaritan. So um, I'm going to just try and see if I can find that now. So. Excuse my typing with one finger. <laughs> right. Let's see if I can find it. Um, so I know it would be in the Gospels, so we're going to just select the Gospels and then hopefully you'll find it. Mm. 
Right, okay, I'm just going to go to Luke here because it... Yeah, this is the this is the parable. So, um, so I'm going to read that. Right. So, um, right. So, <laughs> it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Interesting that people, um, <clears throat> after being told something, try and worm their way out of things because. Um, I'm going to actually go up, so I'm diverting again. <laughs> I'm going off track, but um, so this is just see, um, it's Luke 10, verse 33. But I'm reading up a few verses. Um, so in verse 25, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit inter eternal life? It's funny, isn't it, that people kind of like have their little tactics and they just want to try and catch catch Jesus out, you know. And people do that today, don't they? You know, they act as if some people, you know, they can act as if they're they're genuinely interested, but then, you know, they have like an ulterior motive. Um, so Jesus said to him, "What is written in the law? How readest thou?" So he's saying, like, you know, what's written in the law? You know, how do you sort of like um, read it how do you you know um, and then in verse 27 um, the man answers um, and he answering said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with, with all thy mind and thy neighbour as thyself and he said unto him so this is Jesus saying to, to him Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. So he's saying to him, if you do this, then you'll live. And then um, the man answers, and it says here, he was willing to justify himself. So in other words, you know, he wasn't looking for justification from God. Um, um, he was, you know, he wanted to make, make things easy for himself or you know trying to wriggle out of things so he said he said to Jesus and who is my neighbor and then in verse 30 Jesus says um, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn. And took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and um that doesn't sound a lot but i mean it was would have been a lot back then i suppose um, um and took out two pence um and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again i will repay thee which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbour unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that show, I think this is the man speaking, um, the lawyer. And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. So, isn't that interesting? I mean, well... I'm going to have a look at that um, and see because, um, you know, so maybe it was like a teacher of the law because it says um, lawyer. So, <clears throat> right, so it said a certain lawyer. So I'm just, I'm going to have a look at the, the word there where it says lawyer. And the word is um, nomikos, 
which means pertaining to the law, one learned in the law. In the New Testament, an interpreter and teacher of the Mosaic law. So this was somebody that was um, quite knowledgeable about the Mosaic law. Um, so Right, sorry, we'll just go back. Yeah, so, um, you know, so Jesus is, I think Jesus sees his heart and he sees that, you know, he, he's knowledgeable about the law, but he's not very good at loving his neighbor. <laughs> but it's interesting because the man wanted to cut kind of catch him out it's interesting isn't it it seems like because the man wanted to tempt him you know or test him you know but it's interesting that like you know what what was a test um turns in into jesus commanding him you know instructing him to go and do this you know um so it's amazing Makes you wonder, did he just have kind of like a religious sort of attitude, you know, like a legalistic type of attitude? He maybe didn't really love God and he didn't really love his fellow man and he didn't love his neighbor. You know, so, um, yeah, and it's a lesson for us as well, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, just being genuine in love you know and and being sincere and doing things from the heart um so right okay so um yeah and the reason why i, I kind of um wanted to have a look at that was because um you know just as there you know um jesus identified who the neighbor was by giving the parable um, we can identify who our so-called enemies are you know who are our enemies you know I mean we don't like necessarily I think most of us aren't sort of like um, you know in the military and so we're not kind of like off you know in another country sort of fighting against people who are enemies like you know enemy combatants and things like that you know but we can have en enemies you know that are like you know um, just like say for example people at work um, people that for some reason have you know for some reason just um, have decided that they're going to make your life <laughs> make your life difficult you know or um it could be an employer it could be a work colleague um you know it could be you know it, it could be any any sort of person really you know and you know this just um shows um the verse in romans you know, again, it's it's all the way through, really, the Gospels. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, the New Testament, and even look, even in that in the Old Testament, in that um, verse in Proverbs, you know that um, you know that we're to be good to our enemy. Mm. Modern sort of warfare is not like that, really, is it? I mean, we have. Um, is it the Geneva Convention um, and things like, um, you know, war, things like war crimes, things that are deemed as war crimes. But, um, you know, I mean, how well do people sort of adhere to these things, you know, and... Um, You know, but um, we're not, 
supposed to. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a secular world, you know. Um, so the nations, the rulers of nature, nations, they're secular. Um, I mean, there's probably few, <laughs> you know, few kind of godly leaders that are around, um, you know, but, um, you know, but we are not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. And so um, we are to be the children of God, you know, to, to live just um, in a way that reflects who we are. You know, and it's because of Jesus, it's because of what he's done in us, you know, and um, it's not of our own goodness or our own righteousness, um, you know, but um, we have the righteousness of Christ, you know, that is upon us and, um, you know, and we, we have his nature and his spirit in us when we become born again, so, you know, praise God that he changes us. You know, and he changes us from the inside out, and there is, there is no, nothing, you know, there's nothing else. There's no, um, no, <laughs> there's no other system. I'll call it a system. I don't know really what else to call it. Um, you know, um, that that teaches the same, that does the same. You know, we have we have a savior. You know, who washes us. And who cleanses us, and you know, um, we are washed by His blood. Now, s some people probably think that sounds a bit gruesome, <laughs> but you know, it's actually like an old principle, an Old Testament principle, that there is no remission um, without the shedding of blood. You know, there's no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. You know. Um, so and when Jesus when Jesus' blood was shed, then it you know, it was more powerful than the blood of um blood of lambs or goats, you know. It was more powerful because of the fact that it was it was God who died. It was God who died for us and he was sinless. So um praise God. Um <clears throat> So, yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, I might, or, well, I could kind of um, ask you to, some of you, if you're interested, to go and have a look at the, um, you know, the meaning of, of what, it, um, what it is to heap coals of, coals of fire on your head because it sounds at first it sounds like a negative doesn't it it sounds like it's something bad um but you know i'd heard that that it was actually a blessing yeah but i think maybe one or two know one or two of you know more about that so um or maybe more <laughs> um so um we're going to have a look at verse 21 now and um, it says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So, I'm going to have a look at that. Um, that word, overcome. Right. So, it's, it's the word... Nikayo, and um, it means to conquer, to carry off the victory, come off victorious. Um, it can mean of Christ being victorious over all his foes, of Christians that hold fast their faith even unto death against the power of their foes and temptations and persecutions. Wow. Because this... Uh, you know, the Bible sort of like prophesies that, um, you know, that we will be persecuted. Jesus said this, you know, um, <clears throat> that we're not above um, our master. 
And so whatever happened to him, you know, things that we're going to face. And so, you know, and it seems like things are ramping up. And, you know, we know that um, in the end times, people are literally going, and they already are losing their lives for the sake of Christ. And so, um, but that will become more widespread. And um, there are things on the horizon and already in the, um, already um, at work, Lord, uh, really, um, that, you know, are going to kind of, um, manifest really and you know um <clears throat> certain laws and things like that so um but you know we are overcomers we are overcomers we are not meant to be defeated um you know and i just pray that um that the lord would just really raise us up to be victorious and that he will strengthen us you know that he will strengthen our inner man and that you know that we will rise and take our places and that we would not faint and that we would not shrink back that we would not be timid and so I just pray this in the name of Jesus that you know that God will just fill us with his Holy Spirit, that we will be made bold and courageous, just like Peter was, you know, and I think of, <clears throat> I think of when Peter was um, so afraid of what people thought, you know, and he was fearful for his own life, that, you know, that he was kind of like swearing that he wasn't, um, a follower of Jesus, you know, um, when that time that Jesus had been taken captive and um, Peter was nearby, but Jesus had told him, you know, before the cock crows three times, you shall deny me. Um, and so, you know, but then when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit um, on the day of Pentecost, and all the, the other believers there were filled with the Spirit too, you know. He he preached with boldness, you know, he spoke with boldness and, you know, he wasn't afraid. And so, um, yeah, I just, um, I just pray that that would be true of all of us, of every single one here in the Vine and Branches. And for those listening, who are believers and if you're not a believer you need to come to Christ you need to um, things are going to be it's going to be like black and white you know and you're either with Christ or you're not you're either with Jesus or you're not and it's going to be a terrible terrible thing not to be part of the um the flock, the sheep in the sheepfold where Jesus is looking after you and, um, you know, and ultimately, you know, those who reject Christ because he died and, he, and he, his body was broken, he shed his blood for you and so that you could receive his forgiveness and be washed and cleansed and that you would not have to perish um, because as, as it's been said so many times, hell wasn't created. Hell was not created for, um, you know, for the human race. Um, you know, if I remember rightly, it was created for the devil and his angels. You know, um, but, you know, but whoever, whoever sort of like turns their back in rebellion to God... You know, what can God do? You know, he's already shown his love by sending his son, you know, for us, to die for us, you know. But you need to be sheltered 
you need to be sheltered under the shadow of, of his wings. You know, you need to, to be with him and in him. So um, I just, just pray for you that, um, you know, that you will, you know, that you will turn to, to the Lord, that you will receive him. Just seek him and call upon his name. And, um, you know, and he will, he will be faithful. He will be faithful. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I might just... Yeah, sorry, I'll just finish off this first. But I think I'm going to just sort of like... Um, wrap it up soon um and like you know um we'll we'll begin in chapter 13 next time i think so um we're going to just go back to the the verse that we were looking at so so it says be not overcome um with evil you know and um, the, the word overcome it means to like subdue literally or figuratively conquer overcome <clears throat> or prevail or get the victory. So it says, don't be overcome by evil. You know, um, but it says, um, but overcome. So we are to be the overcomers. We are to overcome. We are to have the victory. So, um, and it says, but overcome evil with good that's amazing isn't it that we can even do that you know and I think of um whoops um I, th I think of you know what's been on the news well I'm not sure if it has been on the news but I mean I've seen I've seen it on videos sorry I'm just trying to kind of um <clears throat> get rid of the border um but you know we've seen like with the Olympics you know the kind of um the mockery and things that's, that's been going on there, you know, and um, but you know, you, you sometimes feel like you know you're sort of swamped in all this stuff, you know, and it's just like kind of all around you, but we can resist it, we can overcome, you know. Um, and we are the salt and the light of the earth. And, um, you know, so we are to retain our saltiness. You know, we are to be different and we're to stand out. And our saltiness is going to flavor the things around us. And wherever we are, you know, it's going to preserve. It's going to, um, you know, it's going to make a difference, you know. So... Well, I just uh, just want to pray that um, the Lord will just bless each one of us and that, um, you know, he will make us salty, keep us salty, you know, that we will not lose our flavor, you know, and that um, we will be lights, that we will have an impact. And um, I just pray for each and every one of us and for those who think, you know, I know sometimes you think, well, I don't really get out the house. But, you know, we've said this before. Prayer is mighty and powerful. So if, you, if you're, if you you know, somebody that sort of um, doesn't really get to go out for whatever reason, you know, your prayers are mighty, you know, and you play your part. Because without you, without you, um, people wouldn't be able to do what they what they do. You know, and you're fighting back the powers of the dar of darkness. You're fighting back the powers of the enemy by your prayers. So keep, keep going, keep doing that. And um, I just love love it because you know, I just love love the fact that um, we are all again, you know, just as we saw in other studies, you know, that we're all members of one body and that we all have our roles to play. And together, you know, together that. Um, you know, God's will on earth is achieved. His kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. <laughs> so keep persevering and um, be the victor. <laughs> so, um, okay, right. Well, that's it from me tonight. And so tonight, this morning. Um, so I will see you next time. So have a blessed day and I'll see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>